Alrighty, CNT 140, we're continuing on with Chapter 7. We're hitting the network cable handling section. Uh, so they say in here right off the bat that the performance of our cabling system is dis dependent on installation. Absolutely. By today's standards, uh, the, the, the signals that we're putting through our cable network and the bandwidths we're putting through, it's a high-performance system. So all the little things I do on the install matter. Um, you'll have to bear with me. I'm a, I'm a sports car racing nut, so... It's like working on a race car. The little things matter, especially when you're trying to get this car to go 200 miles an hour. Uh, the wheel lug nuts on correctly matter a lot. So as I'm working on installing my cable system, these little things do matter. One of the first things they mention is all the components must be rated similar. Absolutely. All the components in my system must be rated at the same category. It's, it's only as strong as the weakest link. So my horizontal cabling, my patch panel, my outlet jacks, my patch cables all need to be rated at the same level. Patch panel is category 6. My horizontal cable, category 6. My outlet jacks, category 6. My patch cables, category six. Okay, everything needs to be the same. That way, we have a, a, a tuned system for transmitting my signal. All the pieces need to be the same. Next thing they mention is cables must be pulled with under 25 pounds of tension. Absolutely, uh, they tell us in our standard that the maximum pulling force is 25 pounds. So, in other words, as I'm installing cabling, if it gets hung up, do not keep pulling it. Find out what's going on. It, you know, don't do the whole tug a little bit more. You're going to start changing the twisting inside the cabling. You start un, untwisting the wires, if you will, and that's affecting the structure of the cable. As I'm pulling the cable, guide it out of the box. As these boxers are designed that they should be coming out kink free, and or put it on a spool and carefully roll it off. Don't pull it off the side. Roll it off the spool. Um, and here I even put an example of, okay, a bunch of spools on a pipe propped up on some boxes. Okay, fine, whatever. But have them that they come off that they don't kink up or bend. That's the important part. When I'm installing, make sure that the bend radius is four times the cable diameter or larger. Make sure as it's going around things, there's a nice gentle bend up, down, around corners. Nice gentle bend so they don't get kinked. Okay. If need be, as I'm pulling cabling through conduits, I might need to guide it. It might be a two-person job, one feeding into the conduit, the other one pulling out the other end, and I might even need to use lubricant on it. They actually sell stuff that's safe to put on cabling to pull it through conduits. Okay, Do not pull hard. Do not kink. Do not bend hard, if you will. They also remind us if I'm doing riser installations, if I'm going from closet to closet, go from here to down. Use gravity to help you. Feed it down through the tube. Have somebody up here feeding it down, someone down here guiding it down. Okay. Uh, don't try to feed up. And that's what we're showing you here. We're going from closet to closet. Support the cable to prevent stress. Absolutely. Cable trays. Cable trays. Use uh, J-hooks. Use cable trays. Anything to support the cabling so it's not, uh, there's no the strong bends or any stress on that cable. Uh, if I need to tie cables up, don't use the plastic cable ties. Try to use the Velcro ties. That way you can open them, rebundle them, you know, take a cable out, put a cable in kind of thing. But they're also more gentle on the cable. The plastic cable ties, once you pull them on, you have to cut them off. The plastic cable ties, when you pull them on, sometimes you can snug them up too much and do damage to the cable. Okay? So then they say, all right, for a typical installation, these kinds of things. Okay, so for a typical installation, what you're going to run into is each floor of a building is going to have a closet. Yeah, standard calls for that. Each floor of a building is at least going to have a closet. And if the floor is really large, I might need to have two floors on a closet. The standard actually specifies the amount of area it can serve. It's basically if you get beyond a 90 meter horizontal cable run, you're going to need a second closet. Okay, but I'm going to have closets on each floor. Remember my main cross connect, my telecommunications rooms that we talked about before. I'm going to have copper horizontal cabling going out to the user, and I'm going to have fiber backbone between my closets. Uh, same things we've mentioned before, just kind of reminding you again. As I install cabling to the work area, uh, two drops for each work area. The idea is um, I have one for data, one for phone. If I need that, um, that's, that's what the standard calls for. And these are terminated on a position modular outlet jack, or a position modular jack. That's what they're going to get terminated in.
The other end is going to get terminated into a patch panel in the closet over here. So patch panel here, outlet jack over here. That's my terminations. I also remind you that your patch cables will be stranded conductor. And my horizontal cabling is going to be solid conductor. Okay, Just kind of a little reminder for you. They also say support with J-hooks or cable trays. Absolutely. We mentioned that before. We'll mention it again. Um, as I'm stalling between floors, fire stop is going to be necessary. As I go through this conduit between floors, when I'm done, I need fire stop there. Uh, keeping the fire from spreading from closet to closet. Horizontal pulls, I'll need to pull cables from the closet to the work area. So the, typically the direction I'm going to go from the closet out to the work area. Uh, I'm going to need to go above ceilings, above suspended ceilings, and I'm going to need to route around things like lights up here, uh, any sort of uh, ventilation systems, around any ducts, any power lines. I'm going to need to route around all that stuff. So what they tell us is, what you may need to do, I might need to start pulling a handful of tiles out, maybe every other one, climb up a ladder, take a peek, see what's up there, and I might need to use... Um, either like a, a little like bean bag or something like that, a little weight with a string on that I toss across a couple ceiling tiles to start getting a rope up, uh, across up here. I might need to use, they make fiberglass rod kits that I screw together and actually like, acts like a, almost like a big fishing pole that I can lead my cable over top of ceiling tiles, or they actually make what look like little dark guns with a fishing reel on that I can shoot this out across the ceiling tiles and tie it to a cable and pull it back kind of deal. So there's all kinds of little tricks I can do, but I'm going to have to pull across the ceiling and go around things like lights and ventilation ducts and cables and all that kind of good stuff. When I pull my cables, I'm going to pull multiple cables at one time in a bundle. Absolutely. Um, I think we have probably already installed our cabling in our lab. Uh, so, and we did this, we lined up a couple boxes and pulled them all in one time. And here again, I'm reminding you, if, if I need to do a couple, do them all in one shot. Easy peasy. When I do this, I will mark my cable. Think like we did in lab. You'll mark the end of the cable a couple times. I'll mark my box. That way, as I pull the cable and the label leaves the box, I still know which cable run it is. So mark, mark, mark. Uh, when I bundle my cables, they even give you some pictures in the book here. When I bundle my cables, I will, um, uh, I'll, I'll, after I've labeled them, I will bundle them together and they even show me uh, using a little pull line here. I'll tape here and run some string, uh, string down through and tape it up that I have a, a the rope secured to the, the cable that I can pull it through trays or uh, conduits or things like that. Uh, it shows me a little trick to do that. Again, after I pull my cable, I need to support with cable trays. Absolutely, lutely, lutely. And or with uh, J-hooks. And I show you a couple different styles here. That way you get an idea that there are different ones out there that will work to get the job done. If I'm going from closet to closet, I need to kind of examine, pull, you know, plant, or I should say examine, plant, and pull it. Um, and if I'm going for conduit, I need to worry about... Um, bends and other things that I might have length size bends uh, what I'll typically do is install a hand line or fish tape through there and uh, I, I might use I might, if there's a hand line there awesome if not I might need to install one with either a fish tape or one of those rods I showed you or sometimes things like a shop vac work if I take a little uh, rag and tie a string onto it sometimes I can suck that through the conduit uh, once I've sucked that through, then I can tie that onto a larger rope and pull it through. Then I can tie that rope onto my cabling and pull it back kind of deal. Uh, connect the bundle to the hand line, pull it through, use lubrication if necessary. And this is usually a two-person op uh, operation. One on the feeding end, one on the pulling end, if you will. Watching your tension as you do it. Watch the tension as you do it. You don't want to over-pull. As we're doing the riser, again, two-person team. One's going to lower from the top. Uh, and on the other one, on the bottom is going to receive it and kind of guide it down through where it needs to go. And they, they mention here at the last, when you're done, laying out your closet. We'll spend a little time on a closet layout later, uh, but your 569 standard really talks about how closets should be laid out, that you have room around your racks, uh, you have room to access things, and things are bundled and organized and terminated correctly in the closet. And again, we'll talk that, about that a little bit later along with our 569 standard. So there's kind of the last little uh, tidbit of our chapter 7.